Good evening, buonasera, or buongiorno, good morning, welcome, benvenuto e benvenuti. My name is Professor Barbara Carl. I am Professor of Italian at Sac State, and I'm here to present a new book of translation. We are very excited about this new work, which is the first volume of English by Marco Vitale to appear. The title of this new book is Emblems of Sleep and Other Poems, and it has just been brought out by Gradiva Publications in Stony Brook. Before we present Marco Vitale, who is in Milano and will be joining us, I would like to thank a few people and give you some general information about Marco Vitale's complex and intense activities. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Luigi Fontanella, who is the editor in chief of uh, Gradiva Publications, for um, his uh, support of this project. And of course, the Sacramento State Research and Creative Activity Faculty Awards Program and the College of Arts and Letters at California State University. Uh, they also were uh, very supportive in allowing us to realize and complete this book. Originally, Marco Vitale was scheduled to come to Sac State and present this book. Of course, the current pandemic uh, obliged us to revise our plans. So we're partially compensating for this by making this presentation today. Marco Vitale lives and works in Milano. He is a librarian at the Politecnico University. He is mainly a poet, I would say. He's published uh, several major uh, volumes of poetry, which we're going to look at briefly. Um, he has also written two collections of short stories. Um, and he is also a critic who has written authoritatively and brilliantly on many other poets and writers. Uh, and he collaborates uh, with several different journals and reviews, uh, such as Poesia or L'Indice dei Libri del Mese, uh, Insula Europea, which is an online journal, and, and others. Um, Marco Vitale is also a translator, as we'll see, uh, from, from the French. And his other area of, of production uh, is uh, art books. He has worked with uh, several uh, major Italian artists to produce uh, some beautiful, beautiful works. Uh, the cover of uh, our own uh, volume, Emblems of Sleep, as you may see, has uh, a work uh, by Giulia Napoleone, whom I sometimes jokingly call Giulia Farnese, but it's a way of uh, paying homage to her. Um, Giulia Napoleone is uh, a well-known, uh, well-recognized Italian artist, and she um, has made this beautiful 20th work of the constellation of Orion for the cover of our book. And we'll talk more about Giulia's, uh, Giulia Napoleone's work in, in a moment. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, Marco Vitale's uh, work, uh, what has he produced? Um, so before this volume, the only other translation of Marco Vitale's work was in German. As you can see here, this cover is um, <clears throat> from a volume um, that has been translated into German, uh, German of Marco Vitale's poetry. Um, here you have a, a typical work which is a short story uh, that was published with a drawing by Giulia Napoleone. So what I'd like to do now is sort of take a walk um, and show you some various covers of some of Marco Vitale's works and comment them briefly before um, reaching our, our anthology. And then we'll ask Marco to join us. Um, so here you, you have, um, uh, cover which is part of Marco Vitale's activities. This is Le Città Letterarie. It's a series of literary cities Marco Vitale directs 
this series. Um, and this particular title here, he also wrote a volume for the series. Uh, this uh, particular title is Parigi Nellocchio di Maigret, um, Paris to the Eye of Maigret, who is a famous uh, character detective uh, in Georges Simenon's novels. Um, this is uh, what a beautiful picture of the Boulmiche in, in Paris. So you have this literary um, approach through different authors of different literary cities um, in this series. And Marco Vitale wrote this volume. Here we have um, another important aspect of Marco Vitale's work, uh, which is, of course, his um, various uh, translations of uh, French poets mainly, but also some French writers. Here we have Gaspard de la Nuit um, by Bertrand, Josius Bertrand, which was published in the very um, prestigious uh, series of Bourg. But Marco has also translated uh, Stanze de la Notte e del Desiderio by uh, Jean-Yves Masson, um, he has also translated others such as Albert Camus, um, uh, Miseria della Cabilla, and others. So he is uh, a major translator and we'll talk also more about this aspect of, of his work. Um, here, this is another typical aspect of Marco Vitale's work, uh, his art books. His art books are many. We could even have an exhibition of Marco Vitale's art books. He has worked extensively, not only with Giulia Napoleone, but also with Alberto, Alberto Casiraghi, who lives outside of Milano and who has an atelier where he produces um, very beautiful um, quality art books known as the Puccino Elefante. They're usually of smaller dimensions and hand, entirely handmade and printed um, at his press. And this is an example of one of them. And Marco has, has made many volumes, produced many volumes with uh, Alberto Casiraghi. So Marco has worked with André Bouchard, who is a well-known um, engraver, and he also makes uh, art books in Tocalmato, in near Parma. And as well, he's worked with Luciano Lagozzino, a well-known uh, maker of, of art books in Milano. This um, cover that you have in front of you in, is Marco Vitale's most recent work. It happens to be an art book um, with beautiful engravings and etchings by Luciano Ragozzino and a translation uh, of Ippolitens uh, Vita e Opinioni Filosofiche di un Gatto, uh, The Life and, opi and Opinions, Philosophical Opinions of a Cat. Um, this is a delightful, beautiful work. Um, the, the engravings in this particular work are beautiful. So this is Marco's most recent uh, work, uh, art book and translation in collaboration with Luciano Ragozzino. So now um, I'd like to um, start talking a little bit, delve into our subject, of course, which is Marco Vitale's um, poetry. Uh, Marco has uh, been publishing his poems for many years, um, but his beginnings were immediately, um, let's say, prestigious in the sense that his first poems were published in the review you can see in front of you, Arsenale, which um, we can consider a historical journal that was active from 1984 through 1987. It was directed by Gianfranco Palmeri, based in Rome, who um, was surrounded by other important writers. Um, at the time, you had uh, people like uh, Valerio Magrelli that also worked uh, on this review uh, and, other, and other important names. Um, uh, Palmeri also directed the Edizioni Labirinto Press, an important high quality uh, press as well. Um, so Arsenale uh, produced um, a number of important issues um, here, and, and here you have the cover from 1987, where Marco Vitale's first poems were published. He would call this um, ancient now, of course, this is from 1987, but nevertheless, I've chosen this um, to give you an example of one of the main themes of Marco Vitale's poetry, 
Marco writes uh, a lot about art, artworks, not only working with artists, but he writes about works of art. He writes about history, he writes about places and uh, people, things that have vanished, and he's written also love poetry. But all of these writings of his are sort of pervaded by a certain sense of unraveling and um, dissolution and emptiness. As this poem makes clear, which comes from Geografie, I'll read just the first few lines and, and give you a, a spontaneous translation. Avevo una poesia che si sfasciava come una zattera di fradicio legno, una girandola residuale. I had a poem that was unraveling, like a raft of rotten wood, a residual weather vane. So this poem expresses this idea of unraveling, um, of precariousness, um, which is typical and a constant, we can say, theme of, of Marco Vitale's poetry that you see from the very beginning. So his poetic voice was born clear and, and formed, I would say, which is um, impressive. So now I'd like to take a little walk again uh, through some of uh, Marco's main volumes, okay? Not, not all of them, obviously, because we, we don't have time, but most of the volumes I'm showing you now are also in our, in our anthology. Um, so Marco's first main um, major book of poetry, of course, was Monte Cavo, which was published in 1993. And we do have a selection in our anthology from this book, Monte Cavo, meaning the hollow, hollow mountain, with a preface by the now um, departed uh, critic Alberto Toni, a uh, major critic and poet as well. Then, I'm going to get this in the right dimension, excuse me. Um, we had L'Invocazione del Cammello from 1998, and we also have a selection from this work in our anthology as well. After this, we have Il Sonno del Maggiore, with a work that you may recognize on its cover by, of course, Giulia Napoleone, you see this typical pointillist detail, um, which is cosmic and pointillist at once. It's quite, quite impressive. Um, this is an art book, and this particular work, Il Sonno del Maggiore, literally translated the major sleep, is important because we include it in our anthology. And we'll go back and, and talk about this, but you can see yet another art book <laughs> by Marco Vitale which is also containing, in this case, a complete a collection of poetry. Then in 2007, we have Canone Semplice, which is um, a dense book um, of over 140 pages with 10 different sections. Um, and we include seven poems from um, Canone Semplice, which means simple canon in, in our anthology. Um, so this was definitely a major book, we're approaching the present. Then, of course, we have Diversorium, um, which comes from um, a term Marco uses to uh, describe the Neapolitan um, nativity scenes, presepe. Um, this has a work by Enrico Pulsoni, another important artist on the cover, and was produced by the Il Labirinto Press which was directed by Gianfranco Palmeri. This book from 2016 won the Premio Antica Badia di San Sabino Prize, which is quite prestigious and was awarded in Pisa. Uh, Marco Vitale has won numerous prizes for his books, and he has had various critics write about his poetry, too numerous to list here, but such critics as Stefano Agosti, uh, Giancarlo Pontigia, as well as Alberto Toni, Pasquale Di Palmo, and, and many others. Uh, Luigi Fontanella has also written about his work, etc., etc. And then we uh, arrive at Liani, which is um, a book that contains all of Marco Vitale's poetry from um, up until 2016. So you have all the collections, the complete collections of his major poetry with a few unpublished works in Liani. 
And this, uh, this book won two prizes, the Luciana Notari Prize and the Dino Campana Prize in 2000, both awarded in 2019. Uh, so we have many selections from this volume in, in our anthology. Um, okay, so now um, I'd like to talk before we invite Marco Vitale to join us uh, a little bit uh, about this anthology. Um, the, the anthology uh, has a preface uh, by myself where I try to go through some of Marco Vitale's major themes uh, and the main themes of this this work so what what did we try and do in in this particular anthology um, as you've seen we have selections from marco's earliest books through liani but we also have a, a complete work inside the anthology which is il sonno del maggiore and the idea was to try to compensate for the exclusions which anthologies inevitably incur. So is this an anthology? Yes and no, um, because uh, it has a selection from Marco Vitale's various poetry, but it also includes a complete book. What is the complete book? Il sonno del maggiore, Emblems of Sleep. Um, this extraordinary um, poem, and we'll talk more about it with Marco Vitale, um, is based on uh, this figure of uh, the Maggiore, the Major, who fought in the royal, Italian royal army in the colonial wars in Libya in 1910 and 11, and then in World War I in the trenches, and then he returned to Libya in the 1920s where he died. And he was originally from the southern Italian town of Conca, so we have a sort of dialogue in uh, Il Sonno del Maggiore between Conca, Southern Italy, and Libya. Um, so you have an idea of displacement, and the style and the syntax of this particular book is also displaced, uh, reflecting the situation of the protagonist. So it has a certain dualism, and it also celebrates some of the scenes, the beauty of Libya, which is why we have a copy um, on, on the, the, the cover of the book has a constellation um, evoking the skies that one could see in the Libyan desert. So I think that will suffice. We're going to uh, ask uh, our Marco Vitale to join us. Anno, and we can read a selection for you of his poetry. Welcome, benvenuto Marco. Thank you, Barbara. Good evening. Good evening. So, vogliamo cominciare? Shall we begin? Cominciamo. Siamo a pagina 26. Siamo a pagina 26, sì. Il maggiore Michele N., mio antenato, veterano delle guerre coloniali e di trincea, tornò in Libia, dove si tolse la vita in circostanze oscure nel 1926. Di lui restano una lapide in un cimitero di paese e uno spesso silenzio che poche immagini virate appena incrinano. Sul verso della foto più grande, che il maggiore ritrae quasi in accenno di sorriso, è scritto in inclinata grafia. Le morts ont besoin d'amour autant que les vivants. Il ne meurt qu'à l'heure où il descend dall'oubli. The major, Michele N., my ancestor, was a veteran of colonial wars and of the trenches. He returned to Libya, where he committed suicide in 1926, amidst obscure circumstances. All that is left of him is a tombstone in a small town cemetery and a dense silence, which a few faded pictures barely break. On the back of the largest one, depicting the major with a hint of a smile, we can read the following lines in slanted handwriting. Les morts ont besoin d'amour autant que les vivants. 
ils ne meurent qu'à l'heure où ils descendent dans l'oubli, which we can translate in English as the dead need love as much as the living, they die only when they descend into oblivion. Marco, possiamo parlare un po' della figura di, di questo maggiore? I'm asking Marco to, to talk to us a little bit about the, the figure of this maggiore. Volentieri Barbara. Dunque, beh, il maggiore è un personaggio reale e fantastico. Reale perché è stato effettivamente il fratello di mia nonna, era un giovane che a vent'anni è andato via dal suo paese, un paese del sud dell'Italia, vicino, vicino a Napoli, per iniziare la carriera militare. È stato in Libia nel 1911, è stato poi nella Grande Guerra, prigioniero. E infine è tornato in Libia negli anni venti, nella Seconda Guerra, dove la sua parabola esistenziale si è tragicamente conclusa con un, con un suicidio. Ma di lui davvero si sapeva poco, si sapeva questo fatto luttuoso finale, però c'era una cosa, una, cosa, una cosa che lui aveva lasciato, un album di, di fotografie eh, che erano molto belle, erano delle fotografie che lui aveva fatto in Libia soprattutto, che denotavano una sensibilità eh, per i paesaggi, per le, per le rovine romane, per le persone, c'erano foto di, di, di donne velate, di, 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 di bambini, di, di, di vecchi, di fez, e naturalmente di minareti, di... di di tende, di oasi e del deserto anche. C'era un amore per questo, per questo paesaggio, benché lui fosse un militare che stava lì come militare di un esercito di occupazione. Ecco. Ma e, e tutto questo poi denotava anche una nostalgia per questo posto. È una cosa che, io, che, mi, ha, che mi ha colpito da subito e per anni e anni ho pensato che avrei voluto scrivere. Avrei voluto scrivere un romanzo addirittura, però io, come sai, non sono un, un romanziere, sono poeta, quindi eh, adopero gli, gli, gli strumenti che mi sono abituali, insomma, ed è venuto fuori questo, questo racconto in versi che tu hai tradotto. Grazie, però. grazie Marco. So, just to translate what Marco was explaining to me, um, the figure of uh, the maggiore or the major um, is a real and a fantastical character. Um, he, this uh, figure, as I was saying, is a fantastical and a real figure. He was um, the brother of Marco Vitale's grandmother. He was a major in the Royal Italian Army, uh, stationed in Libya in 1910 and 1911. And he also fought in World War I in the trenches. But then he returned to Libya in the 1920s. And in fact, Marco's family did not know that much about him. But uh, Marco grew up with an album um, which consisted of pictures that the Maggiore took when he was in Libya. And these pictures were quite revealing of a particular sensitivity. Um, they showed landscapes, um, Roman ruins, which we can see in Libya, um, women with the veil, children, old men, um, tents, um, different, different scenes of Libyan life. And they showed, despite the fact that the major was part of an occupying army, a certain love or attachment for this place. Um, and uh, seem to this, this album seems to suggest a certain nostalgia that the major felt for for Libya. Um, so Marco is telling me that he would have liked to have written a romance or a novel uh, on on the major's story, but being a poet, and luckily for us, he wrote a, a collection of, of poems um, in which we have a dialogue between Conca uh, and Libia. Uh, vero Marco, c'è questo, questo, la presenza di Conca? Sì, è la presenza di questo paese che lui abbandona da giovane e che torna nella nostalgia, ma lui è tra due nostalgie, insomma, tra la nostalgia del, del luogo piccolo e la nostalgia del, dell'aperto, del, del deserto, del, delle palme, insomma, di quanto è al, al di là. Insomma. Che bello! So Marco is explaining that the, the major feels this nostalgia, of course, for his hometown in southern Italy, Conca, but also for this 
openness uh, of Libya for the palm trees, the desert, the night sky, as we'll see, um, which is pretty extraordinary in the desert. Um, okay, so just to give you an idea of, of this figure. So we're going to go back to our lettura. Hmm? Yes. Siamo cominciare, continuare. Allora, Fabiana, 30. Sì, stiamo a 30, esatto. E ricordo la festa e le stagioni, le foglie che saggiavano e gli spari isolati nel folto. E l'ora che seguiva era nel cuore di stracci, un firmamento che moriva a notte, come i fuochi dei paesi. Memory is celebration and seasons, the leaves that sounded out and the isolated shots in the grove. And the hour that followed was a dying firmament at night in my heart, of rags like the fires of towns. Pagina 40. Sì, ecco. Ora dormono i venti e le ali estreme, rigagnolo che spinge nell'aperto, grasso, muscoli, fiato, tace la bussola che ognuno reca nelle viscere il tempo, avido di saziare. Ora dormono i pesci del mare e orione che fuggeva un tempo e Cassiopea. Now the winds and the extreme wings sleep, rivulet that pushes breath, muscles fat into the open. The compass we carry in our gut falls silent, along with the avid time of satisfaction. Now the fish in the sea sleep, and Orion, who once dazzled Cassiopeia. Pagina 46. A conca intessono i ciliegi, quasi il corpo di un manto. Le scale hanno licheni e intarsi muti nella storia. Un gallo dorme del suo emblema, il sonno. In conca, the cherry trees weave almost the body of a mantle. The stairways have lichen and inlays, mute through history. A rooster slumbers his emblem of sleep. Siamo a 54. Sì. Di me, se tornerò per nauseabondo legno a una deriva, passerà il nome e appena quello a dire. Rimangono le palme eterne tra la polvere del marmo i fanciulli sauroctoni e scurissimi sguardi a tralucere dai veli. Rimangono le pagine, il rimpianto. If I return by nauseating planks, adrift, my name will pass with barely anything to say. The palm trees remain, eternal in the dust of marble, the sauroctonous children and the deep dark gazes, transpiercing veils, the regrets, the pages remain. So now we'd like to make a leap through this emblems of sleep and go to a poem, which is towards the end on page 100, titled Cosmografie Farnesiane. This is uh, one of the poems that Marco has written inspired by a work of art. Marco has written many poems uh, on art. And as you can see, this poem is dedicated to Giulia Napoleone. So I'd uh, like to ask uh, Marco to, to talk to me a little bit about his relationship with Giulia Napoleone. Marco, ci vuoi parlare un po' di, di questa poesia, dell'origine, del, del tuo rapporto con Giulia? Sì. Beh, io con, con Giulia Napoleone, questo grande artista italiano, ho avuto la, la fortuna di collaborare in vari momenti del mio, del mio percorso. E questa poesia, che adesso leggeremo, eh, è stata scritta proprio 
e in occasione di una sua mostra molto importante all'Istituto all Centrale della Grafica di Roma. Siamo stati in 25 poeti che abbiamo scritto una poesia sulle stelle e ne abbiamo fatto un libro che poi Giulia ha eh, illustrato con 25 eh, disegni originali di costellazioni. Ve lo posso far vedere, questo libro si intitola Nodi quasi di stelle, che è tratto da un verso di, di Giacomo Leopardi. Di cosa parla la mia poesia? Ma la mia poesia parla, parla di un bellissimo affresco sulla volta del, di, una, di una grande sala del Palazzo Farnese e a Caprarola, il Palazzo del Cardinale Alessandro Farnese. Giulia Napoleone vive vicino a Caprarola, nell'Alto Lazio. Questo affresco rappresenta uno, uno zodiaco e in una grande sala, che poi è la sala del, del mappamondo, delle, delle carte geografiche. C'è una fantasia in, questo, in questa poesia. L'idea che ci sia stata, come effettivamente ci fu, una grande festa in cui la corte papale andò a omaggiare il cardinale Farnese e si accesero tutte le, le torce, le, le, le lampade, le candele, l'illuminazione. L'idea è quella di un contrasto tra, tra questa grande luce nel palazzo e il buio che regnava nel, nel Lazio. Soprattutto se pensiamo che questo avviene dopo il 1527, cioè dopo il famoso sacco di Roma dei Lanzi di, di Carlo V. Eh, sì, insomma, è un po' questa, questa era l'idea. Anzi, l'idea era che proprio fosse una, un segretario del, del Papa, un umile segretario che, che, che raccontava di queste costellazioni, di queste luci, mentre fuori regnava il buio. So what Marco is explaining to us is a very prestigious, we can say, background of this particular poem. Um, so the poem was originally written for an exhibition um, in honor of Giulia Napoleone held um, two years ago at the Istituto Nazionale della Grafica in Rome. Um, it was uh, the catalog that Mar Marco Vitale just held up, which was 25 poets writing each one a poem uh, dedicated to the stars. Um, and the title was uh, Nodi uh, di Stelle uh, from a line of Giacomo Leopardi, the famous romantic poet. Um, so Marco, however, took his stars from a work of art that is the fresco, which is in the Palazzo Farnese in Caprarola, in Lazio, uh, which happens to be near where Giulia Farnese lives. Um, so in that particular uh, palazzo, um, there is a sala, which a, a room called the Sala Mappa Mondo, with uh, maps and zodiacal uh, paintings of the zodiac, um, some by the, the Zuccari brothers, famous Renaissance painters, Um, and Marco imagined from the point of view of the secretary of the papal court. The papal court, in fact, did go to that villa um, after the famous sack of Rome in 1527 by uh, Charles V's troops, which was a traumatic event for the West um, and one that was emblematic of the Renaissance, this darkness and this trauma against the, the incredible creativity going on. Um, so the poem imagines a great feast with the lights and the lamps and the torches and everyone inside. And this feast takes place against the dramatic darkness, the backdrop, which is after the sack of Rome in 1527. Grazie Marco. Allora, quindi io direi di leggere questa bellissima poesia. Grazie Barbara. Cosmografie farnesiane. Era tutto finito. Il duro gelo aveva spento il sangue misto a fango, la torsione sacrilega sugli ori e le porpore. Ancora mota, acqua di ferro nella selva, i pensieri. Si andava piano, incerto, ad un sipario. O oh, mai vedute fiamme della sala. Ne arsero a cento in una, e come in sogno il mondo era d'intorno azzurro d'acque e di oceani, corso dai venti, dagli esploratori, dalle cure ingegnose dei geografi, 
degli artisti, nel gelo dei ponteggi e tutto prese a muovere come in un vortice di suoni. E in alto, più in alto, naumachie celeste. Raccordavano carri e favole, misure esatte di pianeti e le stelle. Non fu forse il crudele sagittario, ma ormai la luce era lontana, la notte ancora una perdita. Grazie. Farnesian Cosmographies It was all over. The hard frost had extinguished the blood mixed with mud, the sacrilegious twisting of golds and purpose and purples. Again, dross, ferric water in the forest of our thoughts. We went slowly, uncertain, toward the stage curtain. Oh, never before seen flames in the hall burned a hundred and one as in a dream. The whole world was water blue with oceans. Coursing with winds, explorers, ingenious cares of geographers, of artists in the frost of scaffolding. And everything began to move as in a whirlpool of sounds. And high above, even higher, celestial naumachias joined carriages and fables, precise measures of planets and stars. Wasn't it cruel Sagittarius who put out the light, already distant, turning night again into loss? Grazie Marco Vitale per questa conversazione sulla nostra antologia. Thank you. Grazie, thank you Barbara, grazie per questo bellissimo lavoro per, per il quale io veramente ti ringrazio tantissimo. Ma grazie you. a te, grazie a te. E speriamo alla prossima. Alla prossima.